Welcome back, my wasted youth. This is Rev taking you through Pokemon Special Pikachu Edition the right way. When last we left our intrepid hero, we had made it to Celadon City and the Celadon City Gym, defeating Erica, the nature-loving princess, and all of her little underlings. Yeah, I know. My, for whatever reason, my biggest nemesis in this whole thing is being Bellsprout, and fortunately we did survive, just barely though, only to come outside and find some old man looking in the window, fiddling with, well, let's call it his Pokedex, shall we? Yeah. Now, if you'll take a look, if we are on one side of a hill and Pikachu is on the other, he's going to start doing a little dance. But, you know, that doesn't affect us right now. Um, right now, we are in Celadon City, which means this is a perfect time to explain the first of three major, and I do mean major, downfalls for the Pokemon franchise worldwide. Now, in this case, what ended up happening is, you've got to realize, this was... 1997. And in 1997, well, in 1997, on December 16th, at 6.30 p.m. Japan Standard Time, 37 different TV stations aired episode 38 of the Pokemon animated series. Uh-huh. Well, the episode was called Deno Senshi Porygon, which literally translates to Computer Soldier Porygon. However, most of us know it as Electric Soldier Porygon. Unfortunately, there's a scene about 20 minutes into the episode that, well... Just like that. See, I actually had to show that scene at one-eighth its speed. One-eighth its speed. Right, that episode was seen by 26.9 million households. And unfortunately, that whole scene takes around six seconds. But through an anime technique called Paka Paka, it makes this scene extremely intense. And those blinking rate, that blink rate was about 12 hertz for approximately 4 seconds at full screen and 2 seconds completely outright full screen. So around 6.50 Japan Standard Time, we had a lot of people complaining of headaches, dizziness, and nausea. And in total, 685 kids, right? So that's 310 boys and 375 girls were taken to the hospital, thanks to ambulances, of course. And um, more than 150 of them were admitted to the hospital. Uh-huh. Well, two of those kids actually had to stay for more than two weeks. They had something that people are calling photosensitive epilepsy. Right. Now, that's ultimately a bad thing. I mean, this is an episode that is causing seizures. And the worst part about it is, when this whole thing was thrown out over the news, um, you've got to think like this for a second. The whole thing had to be reported to let everybody know what was going on. But um, when they reported it, they showed the scene again. And now, all of a sudden, another 12,000 kids claimed that they had, had uh, these symptoms. Well, now... Unfortunately, their symptoms more closely resembled mass hysteria than actual seizures. So, I mean, everything is fortunate. But again, this still all happened nine months before we ever saw Pokemon in North America at all. No animated series, no video games, no nothing. This was some Japanese TV show that was causing seizures in Japan. We knew nothing of it. So... Is that cartoon that causes seizures? Wow! Mark, what are you doing? What the? Wow! All right. 
Yeah, just like that. And unfortunately, that's what we knew. We didn't get anything aside from, I mean, after the fact, we got... But that really doesn't make much of a difference either. Now, why I'm saying that here is because, well, in this game corner, we can actually exchange for things that, in some cases, we have, which is fine. But in this case, we can actually buy a Porygon. Hey, that's great. We will get one. We will actually get it properly. But not yet. No, I don't. Okay. Now, approximately 1 in 4,000 people is susceptible to this type of seizure, and the number of people affected by that Pokemon episode is unprecedented. Again, think of this. It's 2 or 26.9 million people who saw this thing. So, I mean, that's a huge number, and definitely, unfortunately, a very huge knock to the Pokemon franchise. I totally understand that. Now, there was an article that attacked the entire Japanese animation industry that appeared in USA Today. It was written by Jefferson Graham and Tim Friend, and it contended that American children aren't likely to suffer seizures provoked by TV cartoons because the US networks don't air the graphic Japanese cartoons known as anime. Well, the reality is, at the time, again, this was 1997, it really was true. Um, we did get some Japanese animation, not a whole lot, and there was a lot of stuff that we farmed out to Japan to get drawn for us, but in all actuality, there were still effectively American cartoons drawn by the Japanese. We did have a few pieces of anime, but not that much. Now, Ron Morris at CityRain.com stated, There was nothing graphic about the show or the scene, and unfortunately the effect caused was just an unlucky combination of factors. Truth of the matter is, it's true, but now it's re the whole incident is referred to as Pokemon Shock. And, hey, now we have an Eevee. That's great, but, um, okay. So we do have an Eevee. Wonderful. Okay. Hey, man, that's really... Huh. Okay. Now, in the aftermath of all of this, Tokyo TV issued an apology to the Japanese people and uh, put Pokemon on hiatus for four months. And video retailers all across Japan removed Pokemon from all of their video rental shelves. Now, the following day, Nintendo shares for stock dropped 12,200 yen, which is a whole lot more than the 400 yen, or 5%, which it initially dropped just after the airing of the episode. Now, the president of the Nintendo Hiroshi Yamachi said at a press conference the day after the episode had aired that the video game was not responsible for the original Pokemon game, which was made for the Game Boy, was presented in black and white, and there was no real possibility of photosensitive epilepsy. And yeah, you know what? That's true. Now, when Pokemon came back to TV in 1998, its time slot was changed and it was replaced, uh, or excuse me, it was uh, represented on Thursday nights instead of Tuesday. The opening theme was redone and a whole lot of black screens were shown between the flashing colors. But hey, that's great. Um, and before its rebroadcast, a piece was put out called Problem Inspection Report on Pocket Monsters Animated Series. So, now they had to figure out a way to make sure this was never going to happen again. So they changed a few things with the animated series, and it turned out that now flashing images, especially those with red, shouldn't flicker faster than three times per second. Remember, I had to slow that piece down by 
eight times. Yeah, so that's how fast they were originally going. If the image didn't have red in it, it shouldn't flicker faster than five times per second. But still, that's way too fast. They also said that now flashing images should not be displayed for longer than two seconds. Also, stripes, whirls, and concentric cir circles should not take up the large part of the, cell of the television screen. Excuse me. Now, the Japanese government has outright banned this episode in every country globally. Yeah, every country. So even though 4Kids Entertainment has purchased all the Pokemon episodes for rebroadcast in North America, um, they're not doing it. They do have the scene altered, and they have got the whole thing translated, but they are not going to be showing the episode. It's not going to happen. Now, the other change is that Porygon has not been shown in any episode, and Porygon 2 is the only second-generation evolution to never make an appearance in any episode. See, the Japanese didn't want to remind people of what had already happened, so they just stopped it. Hey, that's great. It's unfortunate, but it is really a good thing, ultimately. Now, we have to get this little girl to drink. Uh, okay. Hey, I'll get one of those, sure. Okay, so I've got a fresh water. Um, what else do I want here? I think I'll get a soda pop as well. Okay, so I've got a soda pop now, too. And one more lemonade. Now, see, the reality is Porygon was never really that impressive. And if you'll take a look at the clip that I did show you, it wasn't even Porygon that caused the whole thing. It was an attack made by Pikachu, but I do understand why now they can no longer show Porygon. Okay, Ice Beam is brilliant. So brilliant, in fact, I am going to put it on Squirtle. I will definitely do it off screen, but now our Squirtle will have Ice Beam. I know, man, that's brilliant. You're still thirsty. Okay, sure. Um, there you go. And with one soda pop, she is going to give us TM48. Okay, Rock Slide is another great one. See, the fact of the matter is she we are just giving her three different drinks. She will give us three different TMs. Well, thank you very much. And all three of them are brilliant. I'm not going to use Tri-Attack, but it is that good. Now, um, we had all those guards who were still saying that they were thirsty, so let us get a drink for them too. Man, that's perfect. Okay. And so now, what is the cultural legacy of Pokemon, specifically the Porygon episode? Well, unfortunately, and yes, this is unfortunate, in 2004 and then again in 2008, the Gamers Edition of the Guinness Book of World Records has used this, this particular Pokemon episode to give the dubious honor of holding the world record for most photosensitive epileptic seizures caused by a television show. Yeah, that's nasty. Now, unfortunately, I realized just how heavy an episode this was, so I am going to leave you with a bit of a light note. But unfortunately, that is the end of the episode. It's all we've got time for. This has been Rev taking you through Pokemon Special Pikachu Edition the right way. Thanks for watching. Till next time. <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah.